Hello, and welcome to the first episode of Growing Stronger's LP Doc Talk. My name is Amir Heather, and I am a parent of a little person and uh, the parent co-founder of Growing Stronger. In this episode, uh, we uh, have the pleasure of Dr. William Wilcox from Cedar sinai uh, in Los Angeles, who will answer 24 questions that were submitted online by the LP community. We hope you find this information useful and relevant. If you'd like to submit your own questions, you can do so by going online to growingstronger.org and click on LP Doc Talk. Again, thank you so much for listening and we hope you support and join Growing Stronger. Thank you. Moving on to treatment for achondroplasia, which I think some other other people are, are asking about mm-hmm. too. So uh, here's the, the update. I heard um, the presentation from Biomarin this morning on their phase one results. They had released a press release, but it didn't have a lot of details in it. And uh, this was a trial of this drug, this C-natriotic C- peptide analog in adults, normal adults, to see what its side effects were. And it was pretty well tolerated. The only side effect that seemed to be increased over placebo, where they just get a shot with nothing in it, is a drop in blood pressure, which is expected. Um, and that will be the, the limiting uh, thing that, that will uh, inhibit um, uh, how, how high a dose you can use in, in humans. But it seems to be pretty, you can tolerate a fairly decent dose, the dose that uh, even more than was necessary to make the monkeys grow. So the plan is for them to, to take uh, their data to the FDA and have them sign off on the phase two uh, design. Um, and hope to do that in the near future so that we can start administering drugs to patients uh, probably mid-2013. Before anybody gets a drug, they will have to be in a, in a uh, growth study for at least six months where they get monitored to, to establish their baseline rate of growth. And the last uh, time I saw the, the age range, it was um, uh, five to uh, nine or so for maybe 11, as high as 11, for patients that could be enrolled in, uh, in, a, in a drug trial. So we have to wait and see for the final protocol to come out. As far as the growth study goes, uh, we're allowed to enroll one out of our eight patients before the end of the year, um, and then sometime early next year they'll allow us to enroll the other ones. They just don't want to get started too much ahead of time before the drug trial starts. Uh, how long does it, it take? Um, it takes... Well, the phase two trial is going to go on for a couple of years. They'll probably start the phase three trial, um, which will be likely be double blind, placebo controlled, um, before uh, before that two years is up. And it'll probably take about three years to to get approval. So I think three years is is the soonest. So you're talking 2016. And if I was to ask a question, um, what, what is the estimate on um, when it is approved in uh, in four years or three years here? Will uh, what age uh, till what age of uh, children will it uh, benefit, or there is no limit then? I, it won't benefit anyone who's finished growing. Mm-hmm. So, um, 
Uh, boys stop growing at about 18 and girls somewhere um, 15 to 17. So before that time and then as, lo as much time as you get uh, will be beneficial, it sounds like. Right, yeah. right. So the longer you're on it, the more growth you're going to have. Mm -hmm. Okay, very good. Very exciting. Okay, the next one is having niche issues with his knees and his hips. Uh, I don't know what kind of, of dwarfism um, he has, but uh, some of them have a lot of arthritis problems. Um, it's, it, yeah, we do hip and knee replacements. Uh, knees are a lot tougher and have a lot longer um, recuperation period, but they're done and hips are certainly done, um, and the success rate uh, is pretty high. So it almost doesn't matter what type it is. Um, what One recommendation that I'd make is make sure that the, the person isn't too overweight and makes it harder to do the operation and, and a longer recovery period. So while, while you're in the queue waiting for, for surgery, and all the approvals and stuff to try and get the weight down to a decent decent amount because uh, obesity is a big problem in a lot of little people. Uh, so I think that's oh how to relieve pain. Geez, it's it's uh, ibuprofen and and uh, you know that's about it. Once once you're getting significant pain and having trouble walking, it's time to replace the joint. Uh, so on to the next question, which is hypochondroplasia, um, and yeah, the, the CMP should work fine on that. Uh, Biomarin just isn't isn't studying it first because there's less of them, and they're going to need less growth promotion than an achondroplast will. So they probably will need a lesser dose. I don't think. They'll be doing a trial of, um, of the drug in, in hypochondroplasia for the near future. That may not be it, until it's approved, even. So I, I wouldn't I wouldn't hold your breath for the next three years waiting for it because it may take that long uh, until until it's available for hypochondroplasia. So that's that one. And the next one, removing tonsils and adenoids um, uh, improve obstructive sleep apnea, usually. Uh, in most, in many types of dwarfism, particularly achondroplasia, um, there's not much of a, a mid-face, so there's uh, not a lot of room for air to pass. And when you fall asleep, it's even worse. So um, removing tonsils and adenoids is, is routinely done in patients that have obstructive apnea. If there's another cause and the tonsils and adenoids are not enlarged uh, and not blocking the space, then it won't work. So it, it all depends on the particular situation. So that answers that question. Um, the next one's from Uganda. Pardon? I think the next one's from Uganda. Yeah, <laughs> that's interesting. What causes bones not to grow after a fracture? I guess it means not healing. Um, it depends what the, the problem was and how bad the fracture was, but, but sometimes the uh, um, if it's a compound fracture uh, rather than a simple one, you can have some dead bone in there that just is blocking the healing process. So um, what's done here, I, don't, I can't say how it's done in Uganda, is you take a bone graft from somewhere else in the, um, in the, in the body um, and put it into the gap between the two ends of the bone. And you could even add some, some growth factors to promote the uh, fracture healing. 
So if it's if it's not been healing this many years, there's there's no way except surgical and a, and a graft to help it out. Uh, Acromesomelic dysplasia. That's the one dwarfism that will never respond to C. natriuretic peptide. I don't know about whether the the non achondroplasia ones will and hypochondroplasia, but probably many of the dwarfisms will respond, but this one won't because its problem is in the um, receptor for C. natriuretic peptide. They don't have any functional receptors, so they can't respond. Uh, there isn't a lot of new information other than discovering what the gene was a few years ago. Uh, nobody's published much on it in some time. And it's pretty rare, so there really isn't a ton of information uh, to, to give anybody. I, I looked it up, and uh, there don't seem to be any major complications to be on the lookout for. It, it has a short forearm and short hands, but it also has some of the facial features that are like achondroplasia, which kind of makes sense. Um, so it may have some of the same problems with obstructive sleep apnea uh, and ear infections that, that uh, achondroplasts have. So sorry I can't provide any more than that. Um, the French group might, they may have some more patients. That's where it was originally described. Um, Professor Morito, Merito described it in Paris. Um, okay, new drug that makes bones grow, that's the biomarin. And um, no, you don't have to do it on babies, but the sooner they get them on it, the better once it's available. Um, limb lengthening won't be until she's a, she's a teenager and pretty well done growing. Um, 3M syndrome, uh, there are no family doctors that are familiar with dwarfism. Um, not a chance. You really have to uh, see geneticists and uh, not all of them are familiar with dwarfism either. That's just a fact of life. Uh, there's people in Montreal, in Toronto, in Vancouver uh, that you could see as well as um, I think Saskatchewan. Um, I don't know about Ontario. So really all, all that you can do is go to a, a geneticist and have them look up 3M uh, if it gets confirmed, uh, which is possible these days, and um, uh, make recommendations. Usually the 3Ms do, do pretty well. Uh, they're just very short, uh, and short from birth on. I, I have a family of three boys at 3M. So that's about all I can suggest there. Um, Someone in British Columbia uh, with osteogenesis imperfecta. It, the, uh, I wrote down where the best place to go with it is. Um, there's a skeletal dysplasia clinic at the British Columbia Children's Hospital in Vancouver. And that's where I, I'd suggest they call up the Children's Hospital and ask for the skeletal dysplasia clinic. And, uh, and they should be able to get in there. Um, if uh, they want any, they want one of the world's experts in, in osteogenesis imperfecta, in, who happens to also be in Canada, he's in Montreal at uh, the Shriners Hospital there. His name's Francis Glorio, and, uh, and could provide them the most up-to-date information that's possible. Not that there's anything that's that's wonderful new that's out there. So hopefully the people in Vancouver can help them. Um, okay, the next one is a two-year-old with achondroplasia who's um, 
from Dubai. Pardon? From Dubai. From Dubai. Yeah. Uh, why is that uncomfortable to sleep? As well, I don't know if he's having night terrors, which little kids this age can have. They can wake up screaming. Um, but I would be concerned that he doesn't have some sort of uh, obstruction. There are kids that can have um, frame and magnum stenosis that presents later and uh, becomes more obvious when they're sleeping, especially if they uh, flex their head. So, uh, so they're putting their chin on their chest when they're sleeping. If he tends to sleep with his head um, extended backwards, that's a sign that he may be uh, compressing his spinal cord. Uh, if he's complaining of headaches, although that's kind of tough in a two-year-old, they may not be able to say it. Um, another possibility is he could have obstructive sleep apnea, which would be really common, and he's just uh, choking and, and unable to sleep. So if he's snoring, that's a pretty good bet that he might have obstructive sleep apnea, and uh, the way to find that out is with a sleep study, um, which I think they should be able to do in Dubai. Uh, otherwise, you might have to go to, to uh, Saudi or something. Okay, the next one, uh, a two-year-old should have a sleep study. She, she had one at six months, everything was fine. Uh, if she's not got any problems with sleeping, she isn't snoring, she doesn't have uh, isn't mouth breathing all the time because of a tiny little nose, um, she may not need one. But if if she's snoring, if she's sleepy during the daytime when she shouldn't be, um, if she's having headaches in the morning, those are all indications that she's obstructing and needs a, a sleep study. So it, it's a judgment call. Some people do it much more routinely. Uh, I tend to be just ask the questions and be conservative and if there's a need for it, do it then. Uh, okay. Next one's from uh, Australia. Pardon? Yes, Marty from Australia. Uh, SMD Kozlowski, there's not, not a lot um, how you can find other people. Uh, I don't know if Australia has, a, has an equivalent of little people. Um, England does, but I don't know about Australia. Uh, in Sydney, um, you probably should see Dr. Silence, and uh, he may be able to help put them in contact with somebody. If, because I believe he's in Sydney. Um, uh, otherwise, in uh, Melbourne is uh, Robbie Savory Ryan, and uh, he'd, he'd know some people with SMD Kozlowski in, in Australia. Um, okay. Uh, from Ukraine. Nadine from Ukraine. and a mitochondrial myopathy? No. Uh, the, the mitochondrial myopathy is far more serious than anything that a chondroplasia is going to do to you if the diagnosis is correct. Um, I don't know how it was established. It's often done poorly, even in the United States, and overcalled. Um, a chondroplasia can, has has uh, poor muscle tone, particularly when they're young, and could get labeled as mitochondrial even though they don't have it. Um, specialists in Europe, uh, nothing in Ukraine that I know of, or not much in, in uh, the former Soviet Union either. Really, you'd 
have to go to uh, to Western Europe to to get anything um, on on the combination of these two. I, I find it hard to believe they've got that unless it, it's just bizarre. Um, but the mitochondrial stuff is by far the more serious. And they need a metabolic person to take care of that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if that helps any. <clears throat> no, thanks so much. It is, it, uh, they can always follow up. The, the next one, uh, so the next question, uh, Ventura, California, from... Uh, uh, well, they should come and see me. Um, yeah. <laughs> they're not that far. It's due for another... It's, um, it, the sleep lab has to be able to do kids. That's the major limiting factor. So it doesn't have to be a children's hospital, but there's not very many places that do sleep studies in kids. So... They, they may end up having, they may be able to do a cottage hospital, which is in Santa Barbara, that's closer to them than, uh, than LA is. So if they can't get it done in Ventura, which I suspect they can't, uh, they may want to try um, cottage hospital in Santa Barbara. And the last one is, again, uh, from Ukraine. It looks like uh, I think there was a couple of people uh, that had submitted their questions through this one person sending emails. So, again. Okay. Growth hormone deficiency, achondroplasia, and hypochondroplasia. Well, if they're not growing according to the, the curve for uh, achondroplasia or hypochondroplasia, so they're not growing as expected, then they get worked up for hormone problems, including growth hormone deficiency. The, the combination of both of those is, uh, is very rare, to be both growth hormone deficient and have achondroplasia or hypochondroplasia. So it's usually not a problem. Um, growth hormone does not increase height in achondroplasia or hypochondroplasia. In the, in the regular patient who is not growth hormone deficient, it's not going to do anything. It's not worth using. So don't, don't waste the time and the money. Um, besides short limbs, visual signs, dome-shaped head, well, big head, yes. Flattened nose bridge, yes. Trident hand, yes. Um, childhood achondroplasia, not have some of them. Uh, they can have a little bit more normal face, so they could be hypochondroplasia too. Um, and can a person with hypochondroplasia have a large head with a prominent forehead? Sure. Mm -hmm. There's there's crossover cases that go in between, mm -hmm. but it's easy enough to confirm the the diagnosis. So based on on X-rays uh, in children, that's fairly easy. Or you can do genetic testing to find the mutations in virtually all achondroplasts and about three quarters of the hypochondroplasts you can find a mutation. Um, would you advise a person with acon and wants to give birth? Uh, okay. Um, so you want to have uh, healthy, I gather they mean average stature children because I, I would venture to say most of the achondroplasts wouldn't say they're not healthy. Um, it, it, well, you can either get pregnant and take your chances, which if you have achondroplasia, it's 50-50 chance that your child will have it. Um, and then make your decision. Uh, you can do genetic testing at about 11 weeks by chorionic villus sampling to find out if the baby has it or not. Um, you can do pre-implantation diagnosis where you do a test tube uh, embryo and test the embryos and only implant embryos that don't have achondroplasia. That's going to be very expensive um, and the testing is never 100%. Um, and another consideration is what does the father have? If the father is an achondroplast too, 
then a quarter of the time you'll have babies with uh, homozygous achondroplasia where they get the gene from both parents. That's much more severe and, and is lethal. Um, if the parent has a different form of dwarfism, then achondroplasia will depend on what they have as to what the combination could do to you. Uh, some, some of those are no worse than achondroplasia and some of them are a lot worse. So it all depends. And there, there's no way around the genetic risk. All right. Well, great. Uh, um, <clears throat> the uh, uh, Dr. Uh, Wilcox, if you don't mind, I know uh, this. Uh, if you you could go over, if you could go over that the one from New Zealand, and uh, I do oh, appreciate. Oh, complicated it. one. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, this is otherwise known as brachytelophalangic type and um, cervical spine abnormalities are well known and are, are present uh, at birth and um, sometimes they can be very serious so uh, that appears that this, that part of the spine has been taken care of as long as they have um, done an MRI of the rest of the spine and make sure there are no other anomalies which aren't that common in this it's usually the cervical spine only then I think you can be reassured that nothing else is going to appear elsewhere in the spine. This is a developmental problem that occurred as the baby was developing. Um, will the surgery restrict his growth? No, um, but patients with this do have short stature anyway. It's mild. Um, he has one leg and an arm shorter than another, which isn't real common for this. Usually they're pretty symmetric. Um, but if they are already shorter at his age, that's only going to get worse as he grows uh, with time. Anytime there's limb asymmetry, it's worse. So what can you do for that? Um, uh, you can lengthen the shortened bones. Uh, or you can uh, stop the growth of the, the longer ones um, before growth has ended and end up more or less the same length. Either one can be done. If he's having problems with knee pain because it, the bones are not just short but in an abnormal angle, then correcting that angle could help relieve the knee pain. Okay, excellent. Well, um, again, th thank there the um, thank you for much for that one. And this the the uh, if you don't mind, number seven, and then I've got everything else after that. Seven. Oh, FCD conditions. Um, uh, can they live a full life? Yes, but uh, they can have complications like uh, myopia. Uh, where the eyes are bad and they're at risk for dislocating the um, retinas. So they often need eye doctors to follow them. The top of their cervical spine can be unstable and uh, if so, needs to be fused, uh, less damage occur to the spinal cord. Uh, and they're at risk for arthritis in the hips and knees. Um, and the only thing you can do to try and prevent slow that down is to not do running jumping exercises and um, uh, keep your weight down uh, so that you're not overweight as a lot of little people are. Uh, what causes it? Uh, the most common is mutations in type 2 collagen that make up most of the cartilage, uh, but there are other causes as well and, and there are many uh, patients that don't have a known genetic cause yet. And, and we're working on that, and if they are one of those unclassified types of SEDs, then we're, we're collecting that, them for our genetic studies if they're interested in, in participating. Um, the, uh, they asked where they can get care, uh, and that would be, the closest would be the Greenberg Center for Skeletal Dysplasias at the Hospital for Special Surgery. 
have phone number 212-774-7332. Uh, otherwise, they could drive to uh, Baltimore and see uh, Julie Hoover Fong at Hopkins. Great. Well, um, uh, Dr. Wilcox, thank you so much for, for actually having the, the numbers and prepared ahead of time for the call and your time right now. And, you know, this recording, uh, as I mentioned, will be put on the web and I'm sure it will be a benefit to many. Um, I'll just open up the phone line to see if anyone is on there. And, uh, <clears throat> Conversation mode is on. Everyone can now be heard. Hey, is that anyone on the phone line? Uh, yeah, this is John. I'm still here. No. And, uh, you know, that, that was, uh, that was, uh, very nice of you to take the time out to, you know, to answer those questions. And, you know, for someone who's kind of new to this, uh, it's, it's, you know, awfully, uh, you know, awfully comforting and reassuring that, you know, um, that someone like yourself is out there to, to do some, you know, do something, uh, you know, by, by taking the time to answer such questions. Thank you so much, uh, John. I, I appreciate that. Um, so okay, with that, I guess we'll we'll conclude the call. And um, uh, Dr. Wilcox, I'm gonna end, end the recording, and then maybe we can stay on the line for a little bit. Uh, okay.